Bladesmiths, welcome to the Ice Block Shop. You ready to go? Jay, I was born ready. <laughs> Let's do it. The Scottish Backsword. Known for assaulting Axis positions with his Scottish backsword drawn, Mad Jack Churchill earned his name and the respect of his troops for his famed exploits during World War II. The backsword first came of fashion during the 16th century and is recognized for its basket hilt that covers the user's hand, offering complete protection. Featuring a straight and lethal single edge, the weapon was a brutal slicer and thruster on the battlefield, especially when wielded by Mad Jack. A true wartime hero, Mad Jack eventually served as a commando leader, helping the Allied forces save Europe from destruction. All right, Bladesmiths, Captain Mad Jack Churchill may have been mad enough to take a back sword into modern combat. But what I want to know is, are your swords mad enough if called upon to kill? To that end, I will deliver some killing blows to this ballistics dummy. Do it here first. You ready for this? I came here to watch you kill and chew bubble gum. And I'm out of bubble gum. All right. Let's do this. First up, I really like the way the Damascus pattern shows in your sword. Now, your handle, it's comfortable. There are no hot spots. Every cut you do with this blade is sharp enough to cut deeply. Overall, your weapon will kill. Thank you very much. All right, Robert, your turn, sir. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. I will not be denied. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Robert, let's talk about your back sword here. The tip, very pointy, thrust in easily, cuts on the way out. Your handle here, it's loose. It's really wiggling in my hand. But overall, sir, your back sword will kill. Thank you. Bladesmiths, welcome to the strength test. Today, I'm gonna take your swords and I'm gonna clear a path through this big block of ice. I don't really care what your swords do to the ice. I wanna see what the ice does to your swords. Billy, you look ready to be first. Jay, I was born ready. Nice job. Thank you. I'm sure you could see when I was striking that, the blade flexed all over the place and came right back to where it was in the beginning. Everything's tight. Nice job. Thank you very much. Robert, how you feeling? I'm ready. Good, I'm ready too. Oh, no. I really don't know what to think right now. This right here is where it hurts. It feels like something pulled. Watching Jay scream out in pain like that, I feel that pain as well. It's kind of catching me a little bit back here. I hate that something that I did caused pain to another person. Plus, it's loose. I see Jay stepping off the testing floor. I'm pretty sure this is, this is, it. This is it for me. Bladesmiths, in any one of our finale competitions, 
the way that you design those blades to perform in our challenges is always taken into consideration. And Robert, unfortunately, your weapon has hurt our user so severely that we had to send him to the emergency room. Your weapon has been given a vote of no confidence and cannot move forward in testing. And for that reason, I have to ask you to please leave the forge. First and foremost, I hope that Jay doesn't suffer any long-term effects of this injury. I took my time making sure that everything was safe on this blade. So to find out that I missed something, it's kind of devastating, you know? Billy, your blade is sharp, deadly, and strong, and you are the Forge of Fire champion, and that is a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job, brother. Woo! I'm the Forged in Fire champion. This is awesome. This is definitely not the way that I hope to win, but I was given the privilege of doing this for a day when I can also honor those who have given me the freedom to do this. This has been an amazing experience, and I'm very blessed and honored to have been a part of it. The Northern Long Sax. The Northern Long Sax is a single edge blade widely used by Vikings and Northern European tribes during the Middle Ages. Its razor sharp edge and pointed tip were useful in slashing as well as for thrusting, allowing the user to deliver heavy blows and stabs to finish off an opponent in close quarter combat. Although used as a deadly weapon, the Vikings would also use the sax to hack tree branches and skin animals. Today, the versatile blade can be seen in Netflix historical drama series, The Last Kingdom. All right, bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. To find out what kind of lethal damage your weapons will do, I will take your weapon, deliver some lethal blows on this pig carcass. Clay, you ready to play? Yes, sir. All right, let's do this. All right, Clay, let's talk about your northern long sacks here. Do you have a forward heavy blade? With that forward weight, it really allows for deeper chops. The edges are sharp, they cut deep, and overall, sir, your weapon, you'll kill. That's all I wanted to hear. All right, Dapper Devin, <laughs> you're up next. Are you ready, sir? I'm pumped, let's do this. All right, Devin, let's talk about your weapon here. The blade you have here is nicely balanced that when I cut, the weapon does not do the work for me. I do the work with every slash. As you can see, I cut it down twice all the way through. Overall, sir, your Northern Log Sax will kill. Thank you, sir. Bladesmiths, welcome to our strength test. Fittingly for this Arctic challenge, we're gonna do the ice block chop. It really tests the edge holding and overall construction of your knives. And it's a lot of fun too. Clay, you're first, you ready to go? Give her hell. All right, Clay, I got a little bit of an issue here. Your grain's not that bad. I mean, it could be finer, but it's not that bad. But every time I hit, that blade just vibrated like crazy and it just traveled down. So it started to bend and then all that vibration and everything, it, it just finally came loose. I hate to see a nice Damascus pattern like this, have something happen to it like that, but hey, it's a good fight, man. We hate to see it, Clay. Unfortunately, your blade did succumb to this test, but you're not out of fight yet. Devin, you have to survive six blows in the same test to claim the title and the check for $10,000. You ready? Let's do it.
Devin, congratulations, man. Thank you. Clay, difficult test. I want to say thank you so much for your hard work, but unfortunately, due to the catastrophic failure, we couldn't continue the testing. So unfortunately, man, time here in the forge has ended. I'm going to have to ask you to please step out. Thank you. I didn't expect that my blade was going to break, but ice is just a super hard test for any blade, no matter what. Well, Devin, congratulations, man. You are today's Arctic Forge champion. You absolutely deserve it. That is a brutal test, and you crushed it. Thank you. I can't believe this just happened. I am the Forge of Fire champion, and I'm just thanking all the support I've had from my wife. My first plan is to take my wife to Miami. We're going to get out of this cold weather and go sit on the beach for at least four days and just relax in the sunlight. I'm very excited. The Botang Sabre. The Botang Saber holds the world record as the most expensive sword ever sold at $7.7 .7 million. Commissioned by the Chinese Emperor Quilong in the 18th century, this elaborate weapon is inlaid with gold, copper, and jewels. In addition to its beauty, the slightly curved blade featured a sharp, lethal edge, ideal for slashing into an opponent. Combining artisanal craftsmanship and deadly practicality, this weapon is worthy of an all-powerful ruler. Bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. To find out how lethal your weapons are, we'll take your weapons and deliver some lethal blows on this boar carcass. It's time to find out if your blades will stand up to the most expensive blade ever sold in auction, or if they're going on a 40 to fire reduced sale. <laughs> Glenn, you're up first. You ready for this? Yes, I am. All right. All right, Glenn, let's talk about your weapon here. Your edge is sharp. That's a thick hide right there, and it chops deep into it. Overall, sir, your bow tang will kill. All right, Matt, your turn, sir. You ready? Let's bring home the bacon. All right, Matt, I like the bounce that you have your weapon here. Your handle is a little bit blocky. So when you have a blocky handle right there, when you're swinging for the rafters right there with full power, it tends to move around. I can't get full grip on this. Your edge is sharp, though. Some of the chops there, it goes deep. It will kill. Thank you. Bladesmiths, welcome to one of my favorite tests, the ice block chop, supersized. Now I'm gonna take your swords and beat them repeatedly and mercilessly into this large block of ice. A good strong sword should be able to hold up to the stress. One that's not so good might chip, bend, or even break apart. Gladen, how you feeling, buddy? Uh, a little nauseous. Okay, we'll get over quick for you. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Gladen, nice job. A little bit forward heavy, but good strong blade. Your edge is perfect. No damage at all. Good job. How you feeling, Matt? After watching that, I don't know. <laughs> well, we're gonna find out. <laughs> All right, Matt, you survived. Everything's still tight, nothing came loose, but your edge is not what it was. It hasn't exactly rolled over or chipped, it just 
doesn't have that razor edge it did have when I started. But hey, man, you survived. Good job. Thank you. Doug. All right, bladesmiths. Welcome to the sharpest test that's Tommy Matt Slice. Now we'll take your weapon and try to cut through these satami mats. A sharp blade should cut all the way through. Bim, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's do it. Ching. <laughs> All right, Bladen, let's talk about your edge here. It's sharp. It cut through the first three tatamis easily, even on the one that's doubled up. Overall, sir, your weapon, it will cut. Thanks, sir. All right, Matt, your turn. So you ready? Let's do it. Let's do this. All right, Matt, as you can see, it did cut a little bit, but during the strength test, it did get some dulling. It's still sharp, but it's not as sharp. But this is the reason why we have the sharpness test, so we know how well your edge is able to hold on to its sharpness. But you can see on the first cuts, it will cut. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, the judges have made their final decision. Our new Force and Fire champion is... Gladen, congratulations. You're the Force and Fire champion. Matt. You did fantastic work, but at this time, I have to ask you to exit the forge. Good job. Thanks very much. Good job. Forges and fires are a really tough challenge. It really pushes you to really expand on your skills. Gladen, you are the Forge and Fire champion. That is a title that does not come with a check for $7.7 .7 million, but it does come with one for $10,000. Good job, brother. Thank you. Come over here and shake our hands. Thank you very Good much. Good job, brother. You did a great Thank job. You. The old Forge and Fire experience has been fantastic for me. All the learning that I've been able to do. Nice job. Just a little bit lighter next time? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Being the Forge and Fire champion gives me the confirmation that, you know, I can make good swords and blades and it really helps me know I'm going in the right direction. So it should be 7.7 .7 million, but you know, I'll take 10,000. Woo! The Arming Sword. The Arming Sword was the sword of choice for medieval European knights during an era of advanced armor, when swords needed to penetrate both armor and flesh. The blade's point has a distinctive taper, allowing pinpoint thrusts into vulnerable areas on an enemy. A central fuller in the blade reduced its weight, making it a well-balanced and effective one-handed weapon. Wielded with a shield in the opposite hand, knights were protected as they delivered deadly blows powerful enough to cleave a skull into. In 1429, French troops made a heroic counterattack at the Siege of Orléans, led by Joan of Arc wielding the arming sword. Bladesmiths, the arming sword. It's a cut and thrust weapon. To test the lethality of your arming sword, I will deliver slashes and thrust on these boar carcasses. John, you're up first. You ready for this? Yes, sir. Let's do this. That hide is super thick. To get through that, you really need a very fine edge and not a lot of weight behind it. And I didn't build that. All right, John, let's talk about your arming sword here. It's heavy. It did cut on some parts of the carcass, other parts, it just bounced off. Thrusting-wise, though, it did what it was designed for. This will kill. Thank you, sir. All right, Drew, you're up. You ready? Yes, sir. Oh, nice. All right, Drew, this is a very sharp blade, a great thrusting blade, and I like how you put a counterbalance right here because all the weight 
is nicely distributed so where I can thrust and slash. Your blade, sir, will kill. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Bladesmiths, welcome to our strength test. One of my favorites, the ice block chop. And we supersized it. What I'm gonna do is take each of your swords, and I'm gonna beat them repeatedly and viciously into this big chunk of ice. It's gonna test the overall construction of your sword as well as its edge holding ability. Now, what your swords do to the ice is secondary compared to what the ice does to your swords. And John, you're up first. How are you feeling, buddy? <laughs> Nervous. Well, we're gonna do it anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is very heavy, very hard to control. Also, aside from having gaps in your shoulders here, you've got a pretty good bend in the blade. And that was there before I started. Not a lot of edge left, but you survived. Drew, how are you feeling? I'm ready. <clears throat> Drew, this is a beautiful sword. Thank you. Blade is still razor sharp, which is very impressive with an ice block chop. That being said, the ice block chop is meant to be brutal. It's meant to test the overall structural integrity of your sword from tip to pummel. Problem is, I'm holding your pummel in this hand instead of this hand. So that's an issue. Yeah. Drew, your blade has suffered a catastrophic failure. I have to ask you to please leave the forge. I'm sad that my blade failed. I had a ton of fun. I would do it again in a second. I'm super excited to get back to the West Coast and just get back to work chipping away at my custom orders. John, congratulations. You're the next Forge of Fire champion. Good job. Thanks. You'll be receiving a check for $10,000. How do you feel? I didn't want to win like that, but I feel pretty good. I made butter knives in the first round. I come back with a beast of an arm and sword, and now I'm forced to fire champion. Good job, brother. When I get home, the first thing I'm doing is buying a press and get right back out to the shop and forge some more. It is only driving me to do it more. The Chinese war sword. Ooh. The Chinese war sword was a traditional weapon of China's peasant armies, beginning with the Qing dynasty and continuing through the 20th century. Similar to the Falchion, the war sword is a massive two-handed cleaving sword that generates a tremendous amount of swinging power while slashing and chopping through opponents. With a frightening reputation as an instrument of decapitation, this blade vanquished enemies during the Boxer Rebellion and later during clashes with Japanese forces in the Second Sino-Japanese War. All right, Bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. To find out what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I will take your Chinese war sword and deliver one strike on this ram carcass. Let's see how deadly they are. All right, Bobby. One and done. As much as this is very intimidating in its look, it is crafted nicely. It's got a beautiful look to its finish. The balance is just right for a two-handed sword. A little forward heavy, but it tells you that's where the power is. Your edge is sharp. Even cutting through the spine and bones, no issues, no glinting, no rolls. Overall, sir, your Chinese war sword will kill. Thank you, sir. All right, Will, your turn, ready? Yes, sir, I'm ready. Let's do this. Good job, buddy. Thank you. 
Right, well, let's talk about your Chinese war sword here. First up, it's a very bulky handle. It's rounded. So as you get a good grip on it, you can feel it start to spread my hands around. But the wrapping that you put around it does allow me to get a good grip on it, so good on that. And one shot, one kill. <laughs> Overall, sir, your weapon, it will kill. Thank you, sir. Ooh, I just felt a frightening chill. Must be the strength test. Jay? You boys remember me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome to the ice block chop. This is gonna test not only your edge and your heat treat, but the overall construction of your swords. Now, what your blades do to the ice, I'm not too concerned about. I wanna see what the ice is gonna do to your blades. Bobby, up first, how you feeling? Ready to go. Me too, let's do it. Great job, Bobby. Still razor sharp. No rolls, no glints, nothing. Everything's still tight. I mean, one of the swings, I was able to split that block. So it's got good feel. Uh, just nice job overall. Thank you. OK, Will, how are you feeling? <laughs> I'm nervous, but I'm excited. OK, I'm just excited, so. Well, we got a problem, Will. It's a big problem, sir. Right where you did your very rough hollow grind, there's a couple dark spots right in here. And with that thin spot right there, it was enough to allow that blade to just snap right in half on the first swing. So, did not survive, but good effort. Thank you, sir. Well, Will, sometimes this competition is full of tough breaks, and you've had one on the first strike against this ice block in our strength test. Unfortunately, we cannot continue testing your blade against your opponents. Please leave the forge to your right. This competition has given me the inspiration to move forward and challenge myself in new ways. Bobby, you are the Forge and Fire champion, and that's the title that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job, brother. Come on forward, my friend. Great Thank job, you. great Thank work. You. I feel on top of the world right now. That's a great piece, man. That was fun to swing. This is not just a win for me. This is a win for my family, my <laughs> friends, the other Smiths that I teach in the Forge. Uh, this goes a long ways for our whole community.